interest in ice hockey, even though I do follow the New Jersey Devils. That's the name. Uh, he's a man who has certainly contributed to an increase in sales of Swiss Army knives, chewing gum, and silver duct tape. Uh, he's the man who brought the mullet into mainstream society. <laughs> Much to the joy of rednecks everywhere and the dismay of bogans. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know him as MacGyver, Jack O'Neill, and Nicodemus Legend. But it all started with paging Dr. Jeff Webber. There you go, why? <laughs> my neighbors, they're my neighbors. It's rather indulgent in Hi! <laughs> um, it's me. Um, I don't know how other people run these things, but I, I'd like to take a nap if you don't mind. <laughs> You ought to spend an hour with the whole auditorium watching you sleep. <laughs> uh, I, this is, I guess, kind of a question and answer sort of deal. You guys want to do it that way? Or are you bored with that format? Okay. Okay, if you've got a question, come to the side. There's guys with microphones on either side. Um, or we can just sit here and listen to you talk for. Oh, uh, you don't want me to do that. Oh, yes, we do. You guys will all be taking naps. <laughs> no, I'd love to respond to any questions you want. And I do mean any. All right, so let's start on the left hand side. But um, but that was 
unique, and that interested me. I mean, I was also unemployed when I auditioned and sort of liked a job, um, but it all kind of fit together. I, I mean, time marched on, and I became extremely interested in MacGyver once I had the job. I have a side there. Hello. At what? To the right. We're going to go to right and left, right and left. Um, at what point in your career did you have to have a sign next to you saying that you won't sign knives or duct tape? And what's the weirdest thing someone's got you to sign? Well, I'm glad you asked that, because uh, I, I don't want people to be put off by this. Please understand my side of the plight. Um, a Swiss Army knife, first of all, can be a weapon, let's be frank. Um, so generally, security people don't want you to bring one to a big crowded place, although they're easy to hide. Some of you know that. Um, but that lid, no matter what size knife you get, Swiss Army wise, it's so small and my name is so long. <laughs> it's just impossible and, and really a pain in the butt to have to find a pen, first of all, with skinny enough. Oh, God, see, I knew this would be boring. But, um, and the same thing with. Uh, uh, Duct tape, thank you. Um, duct tape, unless it's a strip of duct tape put on a, a board or something so it's a flat surface, if it's on the actual roll, I won't do it. It's trying, I mean, it's like, to me it's worse. I don't know how baseball players sign baseballs. How on earth do you write your name? And Richard Dean Anderson on a Anyway, it's impossible, it's uncomfortable, it's against my religion. <laughs> I just soon not, so please understand that. What was the other part of that? Because it would be good to address it. The weirdest thing you had to order up. The weirdest thing? Well, are there kids here? <laughs> A lot of kids? Well, the obvious bodily part that I was asked to, and I was younger too, so I acquiesced. <laughs> was a, a woman um, who was pregnant wanted my name across her breast. And I said, just part of your breast, I don't need to dot the I. Or <laughs> so that was, I was very discreet with that one. You know, it's a weird breast. <laughs> hey um, a lot of actors and singers are supporters of Sea Shepherd. There's not a lot of them have been on the board of directors and been as prolific in supporting the organization as, as you are. How did you get involved with Sea Shepherd? And well, first, let me jump in there. Uh, there are, I mean, our word is getting out slowly, um, but steadily. Um, We've, uh, um, Pamela Anderson is new to the, the group, not that new, but she's become a, an active vocal uh, participant in the, uh, in the cause. And a variety of other people, Martin Sheen has been at the head of things, we've named a boat after him, um, which means he gave us a lot of money. <laughs> but um, I was at a, uh, uh, what do you call it? It was uh, an effort to, it was a, a fundraiser basically, but it was uh, at an event, that's what I was looking for, um, held in Alaska. And um, I love Alaska, and just made a beeline, I'd never heard of Sea Shepherd or Paul Watson. And he was the beneficiary of the monies that we garnered that uh, weekend. So uh, I made a beeline up there, jumped in a helicopter, went skiing, came on down, became a part of the, uh, the event itself, and then um, sat down and listened to Paul Watson give a 
speech, one that he had ostensibly uh, given before. Um, but it was so, he was so passionate and so, not for me, obviously. <laughs> Must be important. Um, but I was just, the hook was set in me. It was just like I, there was nothing I could do to avoid following this man. And that's pretty much what I, what, you know, what happened was, uh, that I'm from Minnesota in, in the States. And we have like 10,000 lakes, land of 10,000 lakes. There's actually 11,000, but they don't want to change the license plates. <laughs> so it's like 10,000 lakes. Um, the prisoners don't want to. Um, so anyway, I, I just became friends with Paul and he asked me to be on the board of directors, which I was for a while. Now I'm not, because I just couldn't devote as much time as they needed me to. So I'm an advisor. And I'm out kind of selling the word and hoping people will, uh, at some point, either log on, stop down at their uh, booth down here and get some information about what Sea Shepherd's all about. Because you live in the ocean, you guys. I mean, we're, uh, we have campaigns that go down to the sanctuary. Um, the Southern Ocean, she, she's heard of it. <laughs> um, uh, the Southern Ocean Sanctuary down there, we've been trying, we've been trying to um, shoo the Japanese out for illegal uh, whaling. So, um, and we have a variety of other uh, campaigns around the world, various different animals, but uh, so much of it, it just deals with uh, the oceans, things of the water. And that was my initial attraction too, was things of water. And, um, oh, I could go on, but I won't. <laughs> Sea Shepherd, to see what it says. You'll learn some stuff. There's a, there may also, you may also have access to some pretty gruesome um, video that we've chronicled some of the campaigns that show some, some slaughters, that's all you can call them, of, um, you know, the, the well, dolphins, uh, whales, there's one in the Faroe Islands that is just, it makes me sick. But uh, anyway, that's a fair warning. You may click on something. Be ready for it. That's all I'm saying. It becomes very emotional. Yeah. Kicking the time. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, I was wondering if you had a point of your career that you just went, yep, that's my favorite thing that I've ever done. And also if there's something... My favorite if, what? Something, anything that you've done that's just been, yep, that's the favorite thing I've done the best thing I've been able to do, um, and also if there's anything you regret not doing. Hmm. Uh, not yet. I think, I think I'm pretty good. Um, live a fairly moral life. Um, what was the first part of the question? I honestly didn't. You know, I'm, I'm so self-deprecating that I don't think I could even talk about it if I had. Um, uh, huh. Uh, honestly, that's a tough question. I'm not really sure that, uh, I mean, I'm real happy. Oh, I know, I made a daughter. <laughs> She's perfect. <laughs> um, but and I, I think I might regret not having more kids. That's all. I mean, no, oh, never mind. <laughs> I can, but women of my age are usually said, no more.
is this? Is there anybody else in this? It is? <laughs> Just pointing at you. <laughs> you want to open this for me? <laughs> I think you did shake it. I'm so brave. <laughs> TV here on my ass. I'm so trusty. <laughs> Any more questions? No? Okay. Um, hi, um, what would be the most embarrassing moment on Saga East Oh. <laughs> you mean during shooting or on? During shooting. During shooting? Uh, well, how many were here yesterday? So you all know about the passing gas problem that Chris and I had. Um, but that didn't embarrass me. I mean, strangely enough, my mother is just horrified. But, um, no, that's a natural physiological process of the body. I refuse to hurt my innards <laughs> to not offend someone. I'm sorry. Just get over it. You've had it too. But, uh, and it's, I'm, it's kind of hard to embarrass me, actually. Um, I, uh, it, maybe any one of many performances. <laughs> you don't know, yeah. I, seriously, I don't know that, um, I, I, I can't think of any. Well, what about uh, something that you've done that maybe isn't the most embarrassing moment for one of your castmates?
telephone poles and sides of buildings and kids. <laughs> but um, so consequently, all the kid old games that I used to play as a kid with knives, you know, that one where you throw it, stick it in the ground, put your foot there, and you do the same to the kid, the other guy, and then you keep getting like that, and it's, whoever bails out first is a chicken. And um, he has, to, has therapy later in his year. But um, one time, the, the, the bad one was when um, I was sitting in the back of a Cadillac car, uh, convertible, and I was kind of fooling around. Part of the, the action was that I had to take this knife and cut the seat open. And for one, uh, did it once, didn't work, replaced that. Um, and then take two, shaking the car like we're going, and I take the knife and I go like that to bring it down. And it was reversed in my hand. So it folded right over that finger. <laughs> it dangled a little bit. Just, I said, keep rolling, we're okay. But it was just, yeah, that, I mean, it hurt and it's ugly, but I still got my fingers, so. Whew. I've also, um, what else? It was the first year, like the first week, I was running by camera out in the German Black Forest. And, uh, and the camera's coming that way and I'm running that way, we're gonna converge and I'm gonna go past. Well, I, either he was too fast or I was too slow because as I'm passing the camera lens, there's a camera guy right there and I put my hand out to kind of push myself away to not hurt either one of us. I catch that little finger, god damn it, on his shoulder. And of course, it's, it's, we're rolling quiet everywhere. And I, uh, I step past him, and all we could hear is this little <laughs> It wasn't quite that loud, actually. But again, this little finger was busted, just like turning the wrong way. Sort of like petite in the wrong way. Um, and the list is endless. I mean, I've had back surgery because of uh, MacGyver, that bastard. <laughs> Just doing stunts and, you know, playing hockey at the same time, crashing and skiing and, yeah. Let this be a warning to you. Thank you. You want to hear more blood and guts? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. not. I'll write a book someday. Got the microphone. Use it, son. Uh, hi. Um, what is your favorite moment while shooting, or when not shooting, but you're with the movies in? With last one. Um, My favorite moment. Your favorite moment when you're shooting a movie, or even when you're walking the set and just uh, practicing or. Oh. Uh, um, well, you, the, one of the funnier moments, of course, were you here yesterday? Oh, this is for him. Um, no, it, the, one of the funniest moments ever was when Chris and I came out of an elevator and I had farted inside. <laughs> and it sort of wasn't evident until we started walking and created the vortex behind us, which followed us right into the hallway and enveloped us. And Chris had to run away from it. He just like bolted. But it was funny at the time. <laughs> Not so funny in the retelling, especially for those who've heard it before. But I'm proud of that. I have two questions for you, and I'll try to make it work. Um, the first one you kind of answered um, aspirations in and around writing, yes, no, and. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah, that and flatten out your dialect a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> See what you want to say and really talk like a dumb American. Yeah. <laughs> Can't make any sense. That's a redundant statement. What? Um, do you have any 
aspirations around writing, it sounds like yes. And if so, what? In terms of fiction versus non-fiction? But that's the first question. Say that last part again. Okay, so if you are writing, would you write fiction or non-fiction? Um, I don't know how you sense that in me, but yeah, I've given some serious thought to somehow finding the discipline to sit down and stay down and write. Um, I do it in spurts now and the stuff disappears or I finally find out, learn how to save something on a computer. I found that if I send it in an email to somebody else, they'll save it in some folders. Um, but anyway, I have given some serious thought to starting to maybe chronicle as much as I can remember before I can't remember anything. Some of my exploits and, you know, it, not that it's that ferociously interesting, but I think just for my own therapy it would be <laughs> kind of fun to do. Because somebody, uh, other people, uh, I don't know if you all know who Kate Ritter is. She runs uh, the website for RDM or something. Great lady. But she's been trying to get me to, uh, to send her pictures and things that I write and anything. She's dying for me to communicate. Um, but she gave me the, she sowed the seed of, you know, you're getting old enough where maybe you should try it and give it a shot. So I don't know whether to take a running start at it and just clear some time to be able to do it. Um, actually, I'd be perfectly honest with you. Don't tell the Aussies this. But um, I had given some thought the first after the first time I was here in, in uh, New Zealand of, of having some land here with a little shack somewhere. I mean, that's the romantic side of me. But having a secluded place in one of your beautiful green hills or kind of mountains. You don't have great big mountains, do you? But all right, that, that'd be perfect. Something with a little change of climate. Anyway, just tuck myself away and just start, you know, banging it out or or not. Just like seeing what what comes. Because I right now I don't have the discipline. I just don't. Sixty six years old. You'd think I'd learn how to just calm down and do something about it. But Stephen King writes has written a novel called, a story called On Writing. It's called Stephen King On Writing. If you want to get into writing, it's a great place to start. Um, it's called On Writing. Thank you. Now, right, go ahead. Um, hi, I've got two questions. What was your favorite moment, like, storyline sort of for the Star Hat SG1? And do you have any sort of favorite pranks or jokes or stuff that you've got on the cast members? My favorite moment on Stargate? Oh, storyline. Yeah, not the farting thing. <laughs> um, well, there was an episode, and I can't remember the title. Shout it out if you hear it. You know it. Um, where I got to apply, or have applied, um, progressively aging uh, makeup. And I turned into a hundred year old man. And, um, come on. Brief candle, thank you. Who said that? Wait a minute. Thanks, Mom. Uh, brief candle. Uh, it was really a pain in the butt to, to sit there for four hours and have it pasted on. Well, very artistically put on there. It was a new process at the time. But anyway. As an actor, I had a ball because I'd never done any roles that were character, let's say. Um, and having that kind of makeup on, it was very realistic. Um, even the closer you got it, you couldn't believe it wasn't real. Um, but um, it let me get away with murder. I mean, literally, I could pinch any butt I wanted to. And it was because I was an old man. I could... We give old people leeway to do such things. I remember my grandfather was 
almost 90 years old. We took him to Las Vegas, my dad and I, and uh, he was hitting on waitresses. I mean, like full blown, you know, what you, you're a cute one. So anyway, I, I grew up with that as an example. That's not part of the answer. I'm just reflecting now. Stop me! Do you have a favorite prank or joke prank you've played on other cast members? Yeah, you know, my, I, I hate to admit to having a standard answer to that, but I, I didn't chronicle any of this. Um, my, the fun that we had on our show was born of the moment. Like nobody, like, like. Didn't, nobody pulled a George Clooney by, you know, uh, planning it out and making sure things are there and there and then. Uh, we just had fun. We just, you know, we prank each other at, on the moment. And a lot of it, a lot of our, the humor was born of conversation and, and also acknowledging that we're, perform, we're, being actors to perform in a medium that is impossible. Come on, right now, um, impossible. We, we, although there is a black hole, we found it. Or no, who found it? <laughs> Guys, got to keep up with the science world here. Uh, so do I. Um, what? I'm sorry to be so boring about that, well, in general, but it's certainly about your answer, because um, I don't, I can't, Chris would be able to come up with something. Okay. Next question on the right hand side. I'm sorry. I feel so inadequate. <laughs> well, the first answer was fantastic. Hello, ni hao. I'm from Taiwan. Um, I'm glad watching you um, in the 80s and you will go the number one hero before Jackie Chan in Taiwan. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, what was it like 
when was the crew from SG1? When, when, when? What was it like working with the crew from SG1? Working with the crew. Crew! I thought you said, no, oh, don't. <laughs> um, I have, as an executive producer, um, when I finally became one of those, um, well, this is true even when I was just acting, and that was, I demand of the work environment that everybody be respectful of each other's jobs. No one is higher on the, on the scale than anybody else, because we all show up and have a job to do. So any commentary by snotty-nosed actors who think they're above it all, I just, you know, Either they're out of there, or they get a tongue lashing by me in public. Well, I'll start, you know, taking them aside. But if it continues, then it'll be public and I'll embarrass them. But um, so I've, throughout the years of my career, I've always protected crew because they're so important. I mean, writers first. I'm sorry, I, I respect writers more than anything in this process. But uh, the crew. You can't do it without them. And um, so throughout the years, I've always demanded a sense of humor from everybody, too. I mean, it's not brain surgery, and nobody's going to die from, you know, making a movie or a television show. So lighten up. <laughs> Make sure you get your job done. Um, I'll give you plenty of space and time to do it, but hurry up. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, just, and if you've got a problem, find uh, someone like me to voice it to, to, to whom to voice. To voice it. Where's that English guy? <laughs> anyway, um, it, it's so important to remember that if anybody, you know, is, gets, is in the business here or considers it. Um, that you've got to treat your crew with, with love and protection in your mind because, uh, you know, it, you can't do your job without them doing their job. So, I've had great relationships with my crew. Bastards. Okay, quick, quick, good. Uh, hi, MacGyver. Um, I grew up watching you um, as MacGyver and then when you uh, went on to do Stargate. Now, uh, I know you've probably answered these questions before, but um, with the stunts that you did on the show and that, ha um, has any of them recently been proven to be able to work? And also, um, was there any part that you didn't get that you would have liked to have got in a movie? And was there anyone that you would have liked to have worked with that you've never worked with that perhaps one day you'd like to work with? Do you want to take one of those or two? I, uh, I would have loved to have worked with you. Why not? Just quickly, because this hasn't been touched on, we've got a lot of incidences recently where an original actor has come back for a revamped movie, so Maverick, for example, um, or a TV series if we use The Flash. Could we redo Legend? I give anything in the world to redo that, or to continue it, as you know the case may be. That was the most fun I've had on camera. There we go. So get that trendy on uh, Twitter. I'll play the name of the demonstration, you can play the original. Oh my okay. god. Done. <laughs> Kickstarter, someone started.